Way back years ago, 70s, 80s, it might have started in the 60s for all I remember. I'm a young guy, right? But we used to go as teenagers down in the um, Morrow Park down here, and I'll tell you, the racing that was going around, you could smell the fumes all the way downtown here, and the sound was loud. It was great experience. They were ripping around that track like crazy. The grandstand was full. This was an exciting time in Peterborough all the time. Every winter, people look forward to it. And I know we got some guests that are going to tell some exciting news. We absolutely do. Let's welcome into the conversation Craig Blackwoods. Uh, he is somebody who's going to be involved in the Stony Lake Cup. It's going on at Viamede Resort in Woodview coming up this weekend. Uh, Craig, thank you so much for stopping by, man. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. So tell me a little bit about how you ended up actually getting involved in, in what is now the, uh, the Stony Lake Cup. It goes back as far as being a kid and watching the Kawartha Cup and then finally having enough money to be involved in the racing itself. Um, something I always wanted to do and now I have the time and can afford to do it. Oh, that's really good. So you are somebody who not only is involved in, in the uh, you know kind of running of it, but you are a racer yourself. I am. I'm a sponsor with the OSOR as well as a racer. Oh, yeah. So that's great. How long have you been racing uh, with snowmobiles? This is my third season. Third season. Third wow, season. so you picked it up and you're just loving it? I do. I love it. Yeah, I can't wait for winter every year. So Ontario Snowmobile over Oval Racers. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, OSOR? It's in its fourth year, um, still building and always looking for more sponsors. Uh, it's come a long ways in a short time. I, uh, there's racers from the ages of four right up to 74. Um, different classes, single cylinders right up to super mods. Uh, 440 super mods and F500s. I hope you know what all that means. I Bob, absolutely I do. Don't. I mean, Jordan, when it comes to super mod, I mean, this is just like the, the biggest racing you're going to see when it comes to a snowmobile, is it not? It is. It is. It's fast. We reach, they reach speeds of uh, upwards of 80, 80 plus miles an hour and can carry about 60 through the corners. So when you first get out there and you start racing, was it something that, uh, well, did you always have a hobby with snowmobiling, like without racing? Or yes. Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But the first time you actually raced, what was sort of going through your minds? Because I imagine that would be kind of a unique experience. Don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't crash. Which is maybe like kind of a scary thing to think it too, is, right? Yeah, it is. You always have to have that in the back of your mind. Uh, so we've got the Stony Lake Cup coming up uh, at Viamede Resort in Woodview. And it's maybe tell me a little bit about, you know, what kind of course is this done on and maybe set the scene for somebody out there who might be interested in coming and checking it out. It's an ice oval and it's just under a half mile track that we have. Um, the straightaways are about 550 feet. The track itself is 80 feet wide and the straightaways and 100 in the corners to give you room. Um, we race on bare ice. The, the snowmobiles are studded to the max with carbides that are razor sharp. Um, it's it's pretty fun to watch. Now, would uh, Craig, when it comes to the racing, how many actually would race at one time in a race? How many snowmobiles? It varies depending on the class. Some of them there's two to three sleds. Some of them there's ten to twelve. It just depends on how many guys show up and and what class. So that first corner can be pretty exciting with ten or twelve sleds going into it. It's a nail biter for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is the popularity of this particular sport? Um, just the speed and the sound, like Bob was saying. It's it's. We call it testosterone, the smell of testosterone. <laughs> the smell of testosterone. <laughs> yeah. Get that into your system, Jordan. I mean, you're a guy that could probably filter a bunch of that testosterone right in. I come from the city, so this is a totally foreign concept to me, but I absolutely love it. And is it something that uh, is, is a popular activity for, for people to end up doing? Do you feel like it's gaining steam? Obviously, it has traditional roots here in the Peterborough area. It, it is gaining, yes. It's always been a thing for Peterborough. Like, it was a big event back in the 70s, and we're trying to build it back to that if possible. It's, it's going in the right direction for sure. What happened? Like, why did it end up going away? I don't really know exactly. I think um, people were a little bit annoyed about the sound of it being in downtown. It is quite loud. Um, not everybody likes that, but we'll see what happens. And Jordan, I think that's actually what it came down to. The bylaw eventually clicked in and said, you know what, the sound's going to be too much for the area. But you know what? It went they on did that for years. with the demolition derby. They too, did too. They? It yeah. went on for years, the sounds of the, you know, what I consider the spectacular our event in this city that they shut down and moved out we couldn't get it back because we didn't have a location it's good to see it's coming closer and closer yeah. to Peterborough yeah the yeah. same thing happened with the boat racing as well we used to have it in the middle lake and then it's making a comeback as well so so there's the Stony Lake Cup then there's the Sparrow Lake Cup and then there's the Sand Dunes Cup so is this all part of one particular circuit so the same racers will kind of compete in in all of these yep yep it's um it's it, we do points too and at the end of the season but it's basically all the same guys 
you know, these are regular guys, so some guys can't make it to every race, mm -hmm. um, depending on how far away or work and stuff like that. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's not uh, it's not super serious, but it's serious enough. Right. There's a little competitive edge there. Absolutely. When you get out, anybody uh, ever get out and just start yelling at the other guy for cutting him off, kind of like a NASCAR thing that goes oh, on? Oh, the gloves come off sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of excitement. Yeah. Well, I can understand the testosterone when you're competing in the Polar Bear Cup. This is Lake Commando in Cochrane. You were just telling us about Cochrane. Lake Commando. And did you say weird. last year it was like minus 50? Minus 52 with the wind chill. You really got to love what you're doing if you're going out and racing. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. What sort of equipment do you end up wearing when you are on the uh, the snowmobile? Uh, you wear what we call a tech vest. It's basically like football gear on your upper half. Um, elbow pads, shin pads, just, just basics. 705-874-9050 if you want to join in the conversation. I know you have another guest who is in studio right now. I want everyone to say good afternoon to Hunter. And Hunter, you are 12 years old and you are a snowmobile racer. Yeah, it's basically not the toughest sport. It's just all about having fun and winning everything. How did you end up getting involved in this originally? Uh, my dad started looking into it, I think, and then he talked to a guy named Ryan Matthews and he basically hooked us up with everything and what we had to do, and it went from there. What was it like when you first got out there and started racing? Did you love it instantly? Uh, yeah, it was the best thing that could happen in the winter. Oh, I love that. Rapid Robert, I can't well, imagine. I'm like, telling you, Jordan, I'm looking at this 12-year-old Hunter over here, and I'm thinking, you know, he's putting on all this safety gear, jumping on it. I think it's a 340, is it, Hunter? IFS 340, Jordan. A 340. Now, if you don't know much about machines, Jordan, this isn't actually a real small machine. It's a good, fast machine, and I'm sure it's a little tough to handle sometimes, no, Hunter? It depends. It depends on what? The uh, weather, the, your hands? If your parent, like if the mechanic fixes it up and gives it some more snap, off the start it could be. Like more that. snap, Jordan. Yeah. That's all you need when you get on the racing circuit, just more snap. Are there a lot of kids your age who are doing this, Hunter, or is this something that's kind of unique to you here, man? There's a, there's some more people coming in. Last year it was just the same four people, but this year it should be right. a lot more. And are you going to be competing at the Stony Lake Cup? Yes, I am. So what's the confidence level going into the Stony Lake Cup? You feeling good about yourself? Yeah, I think I should be able to win it. Yeah, that's good. we got a Ricky Bobby over here. You sounded <laughs> dialed in and ready to go. That's good stuff, Hunter. And it's going to be a good weekend for you. You're going to watch all the other races while you're there? Yeah. Good stuff. That is uh, really good stuff. The Ontario Snowmobile Oval Racers. It's the Ice Oval. Global Championships 2020. Again, a whole bunch of races, and we'll post that information at ptbotoday.ca. The Stony Lake Cup, it is coming up this weekend. Viamede Resort, Woodview. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in today. Really appreciate it. Best of luck with, with absolutely everything. Thank you. thank you. Thanks, guys. All right, still to come, we'll recap some of the stories of the day that did not quite make the cut. We will do that when Mercy and Crew continues right here on Talk Sports Radio Extra 90.5.